We would like to thank all of our media once again for joining us for our press conference. Once again, if you do have any questions for Coach, we ask like that you please utilize the raise your hand feature to get in the queue to ask Coach a question. With that being said, we'll open it up uh, shortly for questions. But first off, Coach, if you would please start us out with an opening statement about the game. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, it's an emotional ending to a, a magical ride. Um, uh, you know, Stanford is a great team, well coached, like I've been saying, um, and they they were able to be comfortable all game. You know, they got what they wanted on offense. Uh, they made it difficult for us on defense, and you know, we just missed shots that I feel like we should be making, um, and we just couldn't get the ball to go in the hole and couldn't get the stops we needed. But, you know, our kids fought all the way to the end, um, and I'm proud of them. Thank you so much for those comments, Coach. We'll now open up the floor for questions for our media. The first question comes from Jeffrey. Hey, Coach. It's Jeffrey Newell from Nuts and Bolts Sports. It looked like there were some powerful emotions there at the end of the game. What was the message to your players in that last substitution in the last minute? Um, there's a lot of emotion because um, we talk about it all the time that we're a family and we're not just a coaching staff or a head coach that says that I have a family atmosphere or players that say they want that we actually live that and I truly love them like they're my family and that's how they feel about each other that's how they feel about us um, and so when I subbed out that those seniors and I think Jazz was in that one too. It, it was it was just a emotional moment because I wanted just I wanted to win this game for them. I wanted them to be able to, you know, experience the lead eight um, and just experience this ride a little bit longer because we just have so much fun together. We we truly care about each other, and everybody on this team in this program just wants the best for the next person and very unselfish people. Um, so that's where that emotion came from. You know, there was a lot of tears. Uh, I mean, I know maybe, you know, the outside looking in, people didn't think that we could beat Stanford, but we thought we could. And so for us, it was an emotional ending, um, not taking anything away from Stanford. I think they deserve to be the overall number one seed, and they're a great team, like I said in the beginning. Next question comes from Wyatt. Coach, you've uh, you've talked about this journey you guys have been on for for these last two years, and uh, just coming to an end today. I know it hurts now, but just uh, the perspective that you guys that you have on uh, what you guys have accomplished uh, getting to this point. I told the players we had an amazing ride, and to do this in a year filled with so much adversity. Um, you know, so many ups and downs, so many quarantines. We had we didn't play a game for a month at one point. Um, you know, I was out. I threw my back out. I missed a game. And we just had so many things that went on. Some people were, you know, uh, injuries at times that kept us out. You know, we had about 12 games that we played without somebody in our top six of rotation. So, um, it, you know, it, it just was a lot. And everybody's going through a lot, you know, just with – the pandemic, social unrest, uh, you know, the systemic racism, everything that's been going on. And so for us to stay focused and have, you know, over 3-5 GPA as a team in the classroom, go um, beat Maryland and have the non-conference we had and go undefeated in conference and then make it to the Sweet 16 with all the challenges we faced, um, some that everybody in the country was facing, some that we were just facing. Um, it, it just was a great, great amazing journey and so my perspective is that we got to keep our heads up you know the emotion you see is because I'm looking in those kids eyes and and I'm seeing them broken breaking down because they know that we had we had a look we had more basketball on us you know we ran into a wall and we couldn't get through it so um after the tears we wipe away the tears I think we're going to look back on this and be really proud of ourselves at least I know I'm going to be very proud of them Next question comes from Gary. Hey, Coach, uh, congratulations on a great season. I, I guess um, obvious thing you all were looking forward to this this rematch. I guess for for a couple of years, uh, in a sense. Um, I guess for it to to kind of 
come to an end in the, in the manner that it did with, with Stanford taking control so quickly? Was that a bit of a surprise? It's a surprise. And when I say it's a surprise, I'm not saying because Stanford doesn't deserve to be the number one overall seed or that they're, they don't, you know, they, they have a great system, a well coached, and they dominated the game. It was a little bit of a surprise because we haven't really been in that position. Um, every game we've been down, we've always come back. There's always been a close game, no matter who we were playing, some of the best teams in the country over the past couple of years, um, or people, you know, just anybody. So it was a little surprised that we just couldn't get over the hump and they just kept increasing the lead. I guess you could say that was a little bit of a surprise for some of us, but at the same time, we knew their talent and we knew if we gave them open shots, which we did, that they would hit them. And we knew that if we didn't um, finish layups or offensive rebound or, uh, or even defensive rebound for that matter, that they would take control of the game. So it wasn't a surprise in what they did. That's what they're capable of doing. That's what they've done every game this season. Um, but we just, I thought we could have put up a better fight at times. Next question comes from Mark. Okay. Next question comes from Dan. Yeah, coach, you kind of touched on the challenges that y'all faced all season long to go through the quarantines to still make that run, win the conference championship, and then make this Sweet 16 run. What would you say you're the most proud of? Um, our resilience, you know, our ability to persevere. Um, I always say, you know, it's bigger than buckets. It's not just about the wins and losses. Um, it's about us preparing these young people to go and be successful adults when they leave us. Um, and I think that we're doing that. I think some of this adversity that we were able to fight through is just going to help them. You know, life is full of adversity, um, especially being a woman. <laughs> I mean, even if you're a minority woman, you know, in a male-dominated world, there's adversity, and there's going to be adversity in every one of their professions that they go into, um, you know, and they need to be able to be seen and heard. And so I just feel like some of the obstacles we were able to get through individually and as a team, um, a lot that people don't even know of or need to know of, is just going to help them when they leave and help them be successful and help them impact the world. Because I think we have some great kids and great high-character kids, um, powerful women that are going to impact this world. So I'm just happy to see them come into their own. Um, I'm happy to see them continue to be resilient. And I just wish our seniors the best. And I wish, you know, the, the kids that are coming back, I wish them the best as well. And I know that they're going to do great things here in that maroon. We'll take another question from Wyatt. Yeah, Coach, you had two questions. I mean, you're able to take uh, Bryce out there after a three, um, and we don't know if she's coming back or anything, but just the with the impact she's had on you guys and uh, um, how, how proud you, how proud you are of her, and just the the look the the look of the team going forward. I mean, you, you got to be excited about what you're bringing back and just the potential of this program as well. I'm very proud of Bryce, but she's not the only one I'm proud of. Um, you know, I think Bryce has put this team on her back. She's had so many game winners. She's done a lot to help us uh, continue to prevail. And I'm proud of her. You know, she became a great leader. Um, no, no fluke why she was player of the year. She's a special player. She's a special person. So I'm proud of her. Um, and it was great to be able to take her out on that note. Um, but, you know, I'm really proud of Ellie. I think Ellie, you know, she just continues to defy the odds and, you know, people automatically underestimate her when she gets on the court. And her heart is just so big. Her talent is so big. And she just, you know, continues to make leave her mark, you know, here as a Lady Bear. And I'm just super proud of the way she came out and performed in this in this tournament. I mean, what she did was amazing in all three games. So um, I'm proud of her. I'm proud of Emily, our other senior. I think Emily, you know, when I got here, she just, you know, didn't really have a lot of confidence and didn't really believe in herself too much and was an average student. Now she's getting 4.0s. You know, now she's impacting the game on both sides of the floor. So I'm just proud of her. You know, I'm proud of our other kids that are coming back. Abby Hip is coming back. Abby J is coming back. Um, Brie Ellis, our other senior, she's not coming back, but she came here as a walk-on, earned a scholarship, and she's impacted our team just as much. So I'm proud of every single person in that locker room, from coaches to players to support staff, trainers, everybody. Next question goes to Mark. 
Hey, Coach, Mark Spillane with KY3. Uh, in the fourth quarter there, Ellie made, I think, four three-pointers. Bryce knocked one down. What does it say about not just those two, but the whole group that, you know, even in that scenario, they're still out there fighting to the very end? We don't give up. Um, we just don't give up. This group is resilient. We have come back down 20 at Oklahoma last year, come back and won the game, down 16 to Maryland, who's probably going to be in the championship game, or it could be they're one of the best teams in the country, ended up winning that game this year, down 17 at Illinois State on our road, who's a team that was in postseason and WNIT this year, came back and won that game. You know, when we're down, we don't give up. And those are just a few games that I'm pointing out, but our resilience is just what drives us. Um, you know, and being mentally tough. So Ellie and Bryce stepping up in the fourth quarter was just, we're going to play till the last horn goes off, and we're going to try our best no matter what the score is, no matter who's in the game for the other team, no matter who's in the game for us. That's just who we are, and that's the culture we've built. Coach, congratulations on an outstanding season, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Next, we'll be joined by our student athlete. Once again, if you do have questions, please utilize the raise your hand feature to get an acute ask questions for our student athlete. With that being said, before we get started, Ellie, thank you so much for taking some time to join us. If you would please start us out with an opening statement about the game. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, obviously, sorry. I'm very emotional right now because um, we, we didn't play our best basketball, um, but like Coach Mox was saying, we fought to the very end. And I just, I wish I had more time with my teammates, this coaching staff, um, being in this uniform. Um, it sucks, um, but you know, Stanford is an incredible team. Um, and just reflecting on this season and what we did, it's just incredible. So we have uh, nothing to hang our heads about. Um, the loss is tough uh, because basketball is done for us this season. But again, we have so much to be proud of. And I just, I just love this team. And again, I just, I wish I had more time. Ellie, thank you so much for those opening comments. We'll now open up the floor for questions. Our first question goes to Wyatt. Ellie, congrats on a great season. Just uh, uh, the end of the journey that Coach Mox uh, always talks about. And I know it's difficult now, but uh, just looking back and uh, it comes to an end now, but I'm, I'm sure there's just going to be so much that brings a smile to your face. And um, just kind of what are you proud of for what you guys accomplished this season and a tough season? Yeah, uh, like you said, there's, there's a lot to smile about. Um, so many special moments uh, with these girls. Um, we're, we're special. Uh, we love each other um, on the court, off the court. We're just, we just gravitate toward each other, love being around each other on a daily basis. And kind of like what Coach Mox was saying, I think the cool part of all of this is just seeing each other grow, um, not only on the basketball court, but just the relationships that I have developed, um, you know, changing coaching staffs. Um, I talked a bit about this my last interview, but I can't say enough about this coaching staff and what they have done um, to, to elevate um, our talents, but to just make us better overall people um, and just building high character uh, people. Uh, and my teammates, God, I love each and every one of them. And I, I truly have a unique relationship with each uh, one of those girls. And it's just, I'm grateful to be a lady bear and I will cherish these memories that I've made with them f forever. Currently taking questions for our student athlete. Once again, if you do have questions, please utilize the raise your hand feature to get in queue to ask questions. Ellie, you talked about the growth of this team. How bright is the future for this team? I think the, the future is very bright. Um, uh, there are girls leaving. Um, there are also, also girls staying. And 
uh, we've learned a lot, and I think some of the younger classmen um, are going to step up next year in the, in the years they have to come. Um, th they should have took advantage of this opportunity, and, and I know they did, but the future uh, at Missouri State University uh, is, is very bright, um, not only in basketball, but uh, Coach Mox talked a little bit about this too, but we're just great people, and um, it goes beyond basketball, but we have more to do in the outside world, and I think that's really special. Um, just, just bigger than basketball, and I think that's important. Next question comes from Dan. Ellie, Dan Lindblad with Color 10. Um, when you look back at both this run and also the run you had a couple years ago into the Sweet 16, what do you think is going to be some of the moments that stick out in your mind and kind of when you look back on it, you'll always smile about? Just, just the relationships I have with my, with my teammates. And, yeah, I have memories of, you know, plays that happened in a game or, you know, winning a game. But really most of the memories that I cherish the most, you know, happen outside of basketball. Or, you know, they're just tiny moments that happen that, you know, just, just mean a lot to me. And like I said, we're a tight-knit group um, outside of basketball as well. So, yeah, we may not be practicing or playing games anymore, but we're still um, going to be with each other um, all the time. And just, again, being with my best friends, truly, uh, just any moment I get with them um, is special to me. Next question comes from Wyatt. Hey, Ellie, just just listening to your uh, what you're saying, it, it doesn't sound like you're coming back next year. Just from how you're talking, I don't know if you can confirm that. And just uh, but what everything's meant to you, um, just uh, wearing that Lady Bears uniform, and uh, you've already talked how emotional it is. Uh, just to not wear it again. Yeah, um, that was. That was probably my last game as a Lady Bear. Um, it's hard to let that sink in. Um, but like I said, I've these last four years of my life have truly meant the most to me. I've gone through a lot of adversity, uh, lots of ups and downs. Um, but again, credit to the coaches that have um, been in my life, all of my teammates, it's its truly been the best thing being a Lady Bear for me. I've grown so much as a basketball player, but as a, as a person. And just knowing that that was my last game, it's, it's, it's tough, but I am, I am really looking forward to the future. And I think, people should be excited for the future of Lady Bear basketball. There's there's so much to be excited for about just the culture we have, the the tradition and, you know, what we have right now. Uh, but I'm just, I don't know. I'm, that was the first time I've ever came out with that statement. But um, there's no need to, to hide it anymore. We have time for two more questions. The next question comes from Wyatt. Yeah, just just listening to you talk. I mean, uh, you, there's emotion. You're emotional at times, uh, and, and then when you, and then you sound excited at times. I just don't know what the feeling is running <laughs> through you because it sounds like you loved it so much, but you're so sad that it's over. Just uh, how can you kind of describe what what you and I'm sure some of your teammates are going through right now? Yeah. Uh... I'm apologizing for all of the tears. It's just very emotional right now for me as well as my teammates. Um, I'm sad it's over, but I'm so happy it all happened. Um, you know, as a little girl, I always dreamed of, you know, playing Division One basketball and, you know, getting the opportunity to play in an NCAA tournament. But for me to be able to say, you know, that, I was on two Sweet 16 teams. That's pretty unbelievable for a small-town Iowa girl. And, again, um, 
These past four years have meant the world to me, the amount of people that have came into my life and who will be in my life for the rest of my life. Um, I couldn't have asked for better teammates, staff, um, support. Shout out to all the Lady Bear fans who traveled to watch us play and our families. Um, the love and support has been endless throughout. And it's just, it's really, really special um, what Springfield has right now and moving forward. And I just, I couldn't be grateful for uh, what Missouri State University has done for me. Last question goes to Dan. Ellie, you kind of mentioned all the successes and all the runs that you've been on. You've all, you're also going to go down as one of the most prolific three-point shooters this school has ever seen. If you would have told that to Ellie four years ago when she was signing the papers in that in, uh, Pocahontas, what do you think she would have said about that? Um, I mean, I, I don't know if I really would have been surprised or shocked. I mean, I can shoot the heck out of the ball. I mean, I can. Um, I work really hard. I put a lot of time into my craft and shooting the ball is what I do. And for me personally, this year, I felt like I, um, you know, went outside of my comfort zone and, uh, had mid range, uh, um, you know, I was attacking the rim more and just doing stuff beyond being a three point shooter. Um, and again, that's a testament to this, this coaching staff, how they're so good at developing, you know, individuals. Um, and a lot of that goes out to Coach Tory. The amount of time I've spent with Coach Tory just working um, on different things to elevate my game. But uh, going down um, in history at this university, is, again, is special because Lady Bear basketball is, <laughs> has been and is pretty good. So... I'm proud. It's 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 pretty cool. <laughs> Ellie, congratulations on outstanding season and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you. Go Bears.